once again this is helpful masturbations and uh, we we've been looking at a lot of um, topics as, a, as far as introductory analysis is concerned we in the previous discussion we looked at the limits definition of limits according to Hinnin when we look at just an example in this video we want to look at another example okay, so that brings us to example two and then here we want to evaluate. Okay, evaluate. So you realize that now we are moving it a bit away from proving. So here we think that evaluate and the limit of so this function. I'm not mentioning the name. I guess you remember that in our previous lesson we talked about functions of this nature. So minus x, the limit of this divided by 1 plus x as x approaches um, negative 2, the signal function. Good. Okay, so to, to actually evaluate this, we want to first test uh, to see if the limit to the left uh, is equal to the limit to the right. So if they are the same, then we we'll conclude that yes. The limit exists and is equal to that value. So let's let's begin. And um, so we want to pick from the, the, the right. We were very optimistic that we get interesting answers. So signal the limit of uh, this. Um, okay, and then minus x one plus x as x approaches negative two. So what we have is here then according to so we acknowledge him. He, he actually came out with this method. So Henning is saying that uh, for all Xn, okay, so for all Sn, uh, where Xn is approaching the whole value there we have negative two. It's approaching negative two and uh, we are looking at it from the right. Okay, so from the right. That means that xn is going to be um, greater than negative 2. Good. So, the, but before we look at the implication, you say this is greater than negative 2. So we think of values that are greater than negative 2. And if you are looking at the integer aspect, you look at it and realize that if um, this is a number line, for instance, and negative 2 is here, then negative 1 must be here. And so these ones are greater than what we have here. So that we realize that negative one will be included in those numbers, which are actually greater than those numbers greater than negative two. Negative one is part. But we realize that the function we have here, the denominator is one plus x. And so when in the event that the, the x here becomes negative one, you, you can guess what will happen. And the denominator becomes zero. And we'll be approaching what we want to refer to as uh, um, undefined. So, to avoid that, say we close the interval on negative one. So, we bring negative one here less than, so that we are just considering values uh, between uh, negative one, negative two. Negative one is not included. We are doing this because we're trying to avoid the situation where we'll be getting undefined. Uh, yeah, this place becoming zero. So we close the interval on negative one. So we are just looking at values from this particular interval. So if that is the okay, case, then the implication is that we now have the, sig the signal function here. This place become xn squared plus xn plus 2. And so minus xn divided by 1 plus exam. Yeah. Now, you recall that in our previous um, tutorial that the signal function has a particular behavior. Now, for instance, if this is it, then it's possible that this will be equal to 1, 0, or negative 1. Provided that the function here, the function value, so for instance, f of s is given as positive result. If f of s is 
is equal to zero, then we'll get zero. If it is less than zero, then we'll get negative value. So how, how do we know that the function value here will, will be positive for us to conclude that it is one or zero so that we conclude that it's zero or less than zero so that we conclude that the, the signal of the function, our signal function is as negative one. All that we need to do at this point is to go and look at the interval as you have it here and pick any value from this interval, substitute it into this function and see what value you get. So you can think of any value, any number in this interval. So uh, a number that is readily available here is negative 1.5. So you pick negative 1.5 and substitute it into this. So you put negative 1.5 here squared on a negative 1.5, then we have plus 2. So we, so when we do that, we, we realize that so we square negative 1.5 here, then minus negative 1.5, then plus 2, then we will be getting um, a positive result. So you can try that and see you get a positive result. So when you get a positive answer, then we will say that this is all of this is equal to what one. So we're saying that all this gives us one. So all this one is giving us one. Then minus x n. Then we having one then plus x n. Now as Xn approaches negative 2. We can substitute the negative 2 now into uh, whatever we have here. So, substituting negative 2 here. Putting negative 2 here will give us uh, negative 1 minus then 2. So, this will give us negative 1 and we are getting negative 3. That is the limit to the, to the right side. Now, let's look at to the left. So, the limit of this s squared plus s plus 2 as s approaches negative 2 to the left. So if it's to the left, then we we'll say that um, according to Henry, right, so for all sn, sn which is approaching negative 2. Alright, so and uh, x n is going to be so from the left, so it's less than so it's less than uh, negative two. So here we, we, we are not worried because it is actually less than negative one. And uh, if here we did not finish this one. Yeah, minus x, then divided by one plus x c. Okay. So if it's actually less than negative uh, two. Then we can take our negative 3, negative 4, and so on, which will not affect the denominator. So there's no need to close the interval here. So it implies that we now have the signal function written like this, then minus this, 1 plus xn. So just as here we, we choose value from this interval to test and see whether this is producing positive or negative results. We do the same thing here and pick values. So we can pick negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, any value which is less than uh, negative 2, substitute it here. So if we are using negative 3, we will put it inside and see um, what, whether we are getting positive answer or um, a negative answer. All right, so when we put um, negative 3, you realize that everything here will, result, will be resulting into um, a positive result. Okay. So when it results into a positive answer, so that everything here becomes 1. It's x, then 1 plus xn. Now as xn gets closer to negative 2, then we we'll put negative 2 here and put it here. So we have a 1, then this becomes uh, 2, negative 1, and this is negative 3.
And so you observe that to the left we are getting negative 10 and uh, to the right we are getting negative 10. So we we'll say that the so, um, limit of s squared plus s plus 2 minus x divided by 1 plus x um, at s approaches negative 2 is equal to negative 10. Because uh, the, the, both the left side limit and the right side limits are, are the same. So we will we'll do that conclusion. Right. So let me give you one so that we'll be trying and uh, see how fast we do that. And so let's say the limit of We are evaluating this one. Evaluate um, limits so we have in the greatest integer value here. And x dot so as S approaches two. So good. So you, you work on that one. Right. Um, thanks very much for watching this particular tutorial and catch you next time. Right. Bye.